but it didn't show. So can does it work? Can I hear myself? Yes, it works. I can hear myself. Okay. What was the last thing? Um, but I was saying everything comes together, right? Like structure of the cylinder is linear. Alter the cylindrical structure so you have different lines so they go across. And then visualize the changes by different angles. That is all the aids. And still, the madness, the madness is pure. As far as I can say, this is actually the weirdest, the weirdest leg because it looks like it's coming out of the pee pee poop 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 poop. I'm not saying it, but it is a it is a weirdness for the brain. It is actually madness, and I still love it. Like there are there are a weird amount of things that can affect the angle itself. Like I know there's 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 rules that you follow to make it work in a certain way, and then you you kind of deviate off of these rules. So there are variations, and when I visualize these variations in form and space and line and angle and stuff and things, uh, this is it. Like, this is, this is what is basically moving in my brain to some degree, to some extent. Like, I see a thing, it's a line, it's an angle, and then I have basically form line space, there are multiple lines moving away to build a to build a plane, then to build a box, then the place is plotted out, and then I can have variation for the distortion for basically every line, every plane, independently of the other. It's, it's complete. It's. Yeah. If I want to be funny, I just make funny noises right now, but otherwise, explaining this is complete nuts. Like, I can say it makes sense to me because I know it does. And I know I need this, and I I know why. <clears throat> but for anybody else, this makes no sense. It's just drawings that anybody can do when you have a a ruler and you just do things, right? Like randomness, complete utter randomness. But this is not random. Like I read it like space. Like there is a. It's like a kaleidoscope effect of space. It's like a spatial kind of anomaly. No, it's not, not the right word. Um, singularity. That is that is the word. That is the word. Like space bubbling out of a certain singularity, which is the point, the dense point. So these these specifically, most of these, there's basically the idea of form or lines having a certain direction in space. That is a leap. This is where basically the first arrow comes into play. This one is a leap, right? As is this. It, it tells my brain something leading in a certain direction, right? So when I think about form, basically the transition from 2D space into 3D space, which it's it's weird when like in my brain in my brain when i have a form any form right there is a linear read this is spatial read it follows the space there is a read of the form surface when there is parts of the form having certain angles that changes the read right so then i can have read approach Variations from every corner. This is a dynamic. I can have the same thing from every side. This again would um, basically imply that I have. Um, I re I start reading from a point. This branches to a line, which branches to a. Uh, it's it's a fork, um, but it basically. How do, how do I put this into words? <laughs> Send help. But it's it's like a reading direction, right? So depending on from which direction I read, I have different results. So this being my form that I try to read, its surface, its alignment into space. And so I'm, I'm going to do this. 
I am shifting around the thing in one, two, three, six, eight different variations. And these are eight specific because four build the compass. Eight build something else, you have a star. But we understand this. We understand this very well. So space, to, to basically simplify the infinity of possibilities of space and form emitting from a single singularity point, I have eight. <laughs> which, which makes it so much easier. So simplifying the eight, I have one and two and three planes that visualize the directions. I have no idea where I'm going, but there we go. Uh, so again, it all hangs together. But this is <clears throat> where the madness, um, uh, I, I type this out because it's a stupid, stupid German word. Gestalt. Theory. Gestalt theory. Um, there is a thing in the brain or in our perception of lines and points and, uh, I'm gonna call these, call them realities. Right, where the brain follows a certain kind of management of things and stuff. And this being basically when, even when arranging points, seemingly random, eventually this is where the perception basically says these are grouped or these belong together. So even though I can have four individual points, like this, we know what this is, if I say it is a dice, right? And we know this, this marking when it is a, uh, on the dice, right? A die, How, however you call them, I call them dice, these things you, you play with, right? So this, this too is a grouping of individual points that build a Gestalt. And Gestalt is again the German word for, um, the, the best thing I would, use at least for my brain is presence because something creates something else that is still like it is a single new unit or a new something that is created from individual elements and this is like <clears throat> it is a science let me quickly google this to find the right thing gestalt Theory, there we go, Gestalt Psychology. Um, like it has to do with perception, it has to do with creation, um, it has to do with a lot of different things. Um, but this is like, I play with this, I play with this and I notice my brain responds, right? Just like, this is a square. And it is still a single unit, right? Of course it's a single unit. So if I break this apart, and this is where the brain basically, you can see both. Because reasons, right? This is, this is weird. We can still complete the structure and see it as a whole. Even though, yeah, sure, I manipulated the structure before and I took it apart, but even if we reverse the process, we can still identify this can be three things. Basically, it can be what it is and what we see, but it can be this, but it can also be the square. And this is like, even if it doesn't really exist, I can see it because I can visualize it. Right, so there maybe there isn't even a science that says uh, this works because your brain um, has inner workings that just doesn't. Right, but I can still be creative and manipulate things, put put stuff together, and this is where, <clears throat> like my brain, my brain builds a structure. Like it doesn't. Right, as if these would belong together more than these belong together, right? For whatever reason, right? You can put points on the paper and, you know, figure out why does your brain lead this way. But, I, like, to some degree, I find this very interesting and I had a, uh, did some research when I was doing my photo, photogra photography diploma thing 
um, because it was very relevant to how we perceive certain things and how aesthetic comes into play and how like when you create something right and this something creates something entirely different and this is where art basically shines because it's about the experience right it's create something unique as opposed to something constructed or something calculated which i suppose i do all three gotta burp excuse me gotta do i have to burp again i oh, know okay <laughs> any questions any questions um to now i know right these things they they take into account my reading direction Right? Like I have a reading direction, I have variations of reading direction. I put these directions together to form a new whole. Right? And this whole, the new whole that I create is either a compass, a four, it can be eight, otherwise it can just be the da 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 the di diagonals brain plays that just it tries to skip itself. Um but this makes sense, right? In a a uh, usual geometric geometric way in a more dynamic geometric way. This is basically upright straight and this is 45 degree angle. This is linear, this is dynamic for the mere reason that there is a you know diagonal is a very very dominant in this one. Yeah, that's one one example. One example of taking taking the thing to make another thing. Gonna shrink this down so it doesn't collide. But you have one one corner, and this is this is <clears throat> basically if I have the square, I have these four points. If I have the other square, the diagonal one, I have different points. So I have to know which is this one. Is it the diagonal one, or is it not? But otherwise, I do this. Right? This this is like <laughs> the the most simple way to just put it together. Right, and then what I do basically, I look at this and I see if I can identify a new structure. So when I look at this, and I ask my brain, are there any sort of dominant, radiating, something, something identifiable structures? And yes, there are. Right, <clears throat> like stuff that seemingly belongs together more than anything else. And this is this is random where my brain says this belongs together. As opposed to something else but they together. Like the lines, they go all over the, all over the place, but I try to find a structure that I can identify. And this is basically being a bunch of squares or spheres and they are connected. And this too builds a triangle. So the space between triangles is a, the space between spheres is a triangle. Uh, this is so at least I can identify the spheres, right, to some degree. And then I have these weird lines that seemingly overlap and they kind of fuse and they they transition at least to some degree. Right? So this is this is kind of things I look for, I don't look for, and then do stuff. These these things they also contain distortion variations, which is Basically angles, right? From going from one plane to a plane in space or in distortion. All that happens is you have one plane that is this. If I change one angle, the plane will basically fold into space. And that means this is you. And right now the plane is this. Changing one angle will do this to the plane or this to the plane. And this is basically all that can happen, right? So the one point can be closer or the other point can be closer or further away. And this is like I talked about this earlier because not, there isn't much that can happen, right? Whichever angle I change determines the leaning of the plane into space. It's, it's weird. And I don't need to draw a perspective grid and I'd rather change two angles to make it easier because there's my ground plane. Huzzah. It's like I have a plane and I kick it over. Right? This is the plane standing and this is the plane sleeping on the ground. 
and this is what I see. If I have a triangle at the end, this is what I would see. Logic. And me being basically this guy looking at this right now, being all weirded out, trying to escape. If I have a triangle on the top, this is what I would see. Logic. I love it. It's so logical. It's weird. Logical. Right? So again, between this line and this line, there is one thing happen. Deep breaths. Not, not those ones. Anger change. Anger. Anger. I love it. It's so easy. <clears throat> but this is, this is all it does. <laughs> Run while you can indeed. So, no space, no plane, no perspective, no space. Parallel lines. And the moment you do this, something happens. Because the plane now exists in space. And if I want to visualize this, not much can happen because all I really know is this is a certain size and this is a certain size and this is also a certain size and this is smaller than this side and it's precisely this much smaller so all I do is I make this this much smaller and then I connect and I have a plane it's, it's in space and perspective so from this angle I basically have a plane that is traversing or traveling far away and then it goes smaller. It's like a ramp. Could be a foot. That's not a foot. What's up, Marco? Welcome back, Leo. Astrophysics class. Yes, almost. Almost. We're, we're spatially there. But this, again, this makes sense. Right? And I'm manipulating one piece, which is the plane, into space by manipulating angles right that is that is the basic of perspective like literally and i'm making weird things with my hands because it's yeah i i, I shouldn't slide but sometimes when you have a certain when you're a certain dumbness you can't see things right but then when you're a little bit less dumbness you can see things. And I don't want to say smart, because then I mean, I would imply that I'm smart. But I'm only as smart as I can make myself. Right? By pretending I'm smart. Which is actually smart knowing this, but it means I'm dumb. Which is fact. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. I'm, I'm escaping my own trap. But it is, it's like the, the most logical uh, approach, or basically, when I started out. I did, I went plane by plane. Because between the one plane that is the top and the next plane is a 90 degree difference. And that being the 90 degrees. I have a plane and a piece of paper and I fold the paper 90 degrees. If I fold the paper back 45 degrees, it's like this. If I go anywhere in between, it's something else. But you can, you get the point. Right? Plane folding. Right? Going back, like 11.57 degrees, uh, orientation, elevation, GPS coordinates. <clears throat> but this, this is plane by plane. And the other, the other element, right, is basically if I have a plane that goes above my face, right, above my face, and not below my face. Below my face means I can see the top. What does it mean if, if the thing is above my face? And face is face. No, not, not double E's. I need face. Face. Yes. What does, what do I see when the face is above my face? Okay. <laughs> I'm confusing my face, but it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, I see the bottom plane. The butt plane. Bottom plane. Top is not bottom. Right? This is the top, I can't see it, but it is above my face. That is, that is, that is the important part. And again, between, I have a transition between above my face and below my face, <laughs> and right of my face and left of my face. So, if the box is this side of my face, I have to see this plane. 
And if I make the next line smaller, I can go into depth, meaning into space. If I make the line plane smaller or bigger, I'm going forward into space. Face game, yeah, let's go. So again, if I have this being smaller, means tilting lines. I go into depth and into space because that creates the vanishing point, which is not created if I have parallel lines. That is the idea. Angle change folds it into space. Like it's like it's like I'm I'm making these weird noises and I'm talking really slow to put in the gravitas so you may remember because that is the important part if you remember. Remembering protects and here it goes. It protects you from something very specific if you are able to remember to remember what prevents to make the mistake. That is the key. How does this work, right? It's like it's like the solution and problem issue finding so that you can solve the issue finding. But this is this is it. As long as you remember, you can apply. Right? Or you can apply it to it. If you don't remember that there is a correlation between the big and the small, because it is a plane, because this one is in front and close to you as opposed to this one being small and further away and further away and being so small you can't even see it and then it shoots up and it goes bigger again because it's coming closer in a magical way and it does things like magic because this is now the bottom plane and we have a front f fur front face and we are standing on top of the space on the plane Looking into the abyss that we do not understand. <laughs> That's so weird, and I love it. But this, it, it makes, it makes. There's no word for the for the kind of extremities for for the extreme, right? It is it is truth, and even saying it is truth would imply that there is something that is untrue, and not truth. <clears throat> At least, okay, truth being the the matter of perspective, and that is that is the point, right? The matter of perspective is that there is a that the space that we perceive only exists because properties in our lens, and that means that if it is in the back, it goes smaller. This is weird. So if it doesn't go in the back, but it is still small. And then it becomes a top plane, and I can see the left and the right. What does that make the first plane? So we have a 3D element that contains the same visual markers as a plane in one point perspective, or in two point perspective even. Huh. So if I take this two point perspective and I extend it into another dimension, we have another box. That contains the same visual markers as the two point plane. And then we extend into space by three. This is fun. This is, this is so weird because we are now extending the form into the space. So between the emptiness, we build another plane that then converges. So basically directs itself to another direction. So we have more empty space and eventually this, if concluded, leads to something round, and we have <laughs> basically the roundness that is the plane, that is the box, that is the triangle, that is the line, that is the point, and we are back basically at the beginning because space is round, and it is the singularity. It emanates from a point that is a line, and I'm spitting on my screen, go away, jelly. Okay, so point, line, shape. This is the triangle. From the triangle, <clears throat> this splits open into variations, into more planes. So we have the triangles, the triangles, the more triangles, triangles, triangle, 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 triangle. Oh my goodness, so oh my similar. But this is, it makes sense, right? And ultimately, it leads to the cylinder, at least in one direction. But this is the idea. Right? 
space. So this ultimately is the cone because the cone contains these elements. Usually <laughs> this is like it's like the madness contained. The madness contained of perspective is actually contained in the triangle because it shows the single the single plane into infinity towards infinity. If you cut the plane on the bottom and the legs, you have a box in two point perspective. Dun 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 <laughs> It's so weird. And I like I like doing these sometimes. Um <clears throat> the weirdness is when this goes thinner similar to the waves because there is a plane that emanates from these triangles. So I have basically one point and then I have this plane. And this angle is is so weird. So it goes and comes. So depending on how long this line is, I'm manipulating this angle. If the line is longer, angle is more straight. If I keep it at a certain length, it hits the mark. If I go lower, it changes. In in connection basically with the form that I try to create, I know that if my angle is more up, the plane has a different uh, how do I even call this? It's like I'm changing the orientation of the plane itself, but not the plane itself. So changing the plane is this. This is not what I do. But I change the internal orientation of the plane surface. This is this is it's so weird, right? So I have to pay attention to this one angle changing so that I can properly orient the thing in 3D. And paying attention to this is something rather stressful. It definitely puts my brain in the in the vice. Um, but this is I don't know where where was I even? Any questions? Who is still who is still on the same train? <laughs> this, is, this is a good one. The same train towards the abyss of insanity. Har har har. Any questions? Um, I suppose the point, the point being is single tiny changes to the angle of the line changes the shape of the plane into space. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I lost myself some time ago. At least I'm still alive. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm drink real quick. Drink, where's my tea? Let me eat, eat one canvas. I suppose this is if books, if perspective books had a force, right? Like a sort of, um, what is the word? Cognitive kind of pressure, right? This is the counterforce. Because whatever, whatever you have known, whatever you have learned is now being basically molded and folded and skewed and squeezed like cookie dough and put into things and stuff and then squeezed some more and you whack it with the, uh, the rolling pin and you whack it some more and basically you look at the same information in a different kind of what? Kappa. Aren't you projecting the direction of the plane though? Yes! Yes I am! Yes I am! Yes I am! Yes I am! Because it is a choice. So when I have a long plane, the plane would seemingly basically come alive and say I'm going this way. And this is how I see things. So the square, the dynamic, not dynamic, symmetrical square has no lead. This is what I call this lead. So my default box always has this lead. Usually when I have a plane similar to this, but it is a long box in this way, the lead follows. Now when you have a circle or a round frisbee kind of dish, where does it lead? 
and this, this is this is the weird part because it is round so there is no way of telling where does it go right where does it go so i have to project and i can do this by saying this this ellipse has an axis right we know this one it's the same square ah, it's a square circle square I have a different axis and it rotates it rotates the cylinder circle 45 degrees and this is three quarter three quarter view and still I'm projecting direction this is it's it's very very correct so the plane itself right the direction of the surface of the plane the skin can still follow the lead right this way but it doesn't have to. And this is this is where things get extremely weird because you can have them lead with and then against. It basically build completely different geometry. But this again is the surface, and I keep this in mind because <clears throat> for the cylinder, for example, you have a non-surface linear surface, right? It goes this way and it goes across. These are your two axes, main axis, orientational axis, right? So what if I have a leg and I'm drawing a spiral on top of the leg? I still, the spiral itself has a direction. And I can't see it behind, but it is there. And I can see it again, but it is there. And I can see it again, but it is there. So still, there is a direction of change. And that is that is that is a projection that is very correct and it does come into effect when you contemplate contemplate so many things so there's a front front and top right this this is the plane that we look at and why the leg is going straight down we can say the leg plane skin surface is also straight that means my hatching angle is also straight it goes against the direction. It visualizes the plane. This is fine. It works. So if I really, really look deep into the legs and contemplate the, the kind of complexity, this angle is false. And this is a more appropriate angle. Because the anatomy basically is suggesting that there is a piece of the anatomy coming from the outside. And it's curving in. And this is the big the big fella, right? Like the big guy that goes all the way. And we know this is the separation that is very dominant and visible. Right? And it goes back around the knee and it connects to the calf bone. Shin bones. So if I want to align <clears throat> and orient a form and plane within this orientation, thinking it's a leg, I have to change basically the plane flow because it goes from the top to the shot. And this is basically um, how do I visualize this? I need more cylinders. More cylinders. Um, okay, cylinder. Surface visualized simple, right? Visualize a cylinder of the cylinder surface itself, right? But I have a top plane and I have a side plane and I have a top plane on the other side, right? So this is basically the continuation of the plane. But the plane itself curves around and this is the anatomy. And you can pretend that actually the form is round, so it curves naturally. And this is basically the cylindrical kind of sausage, the muscle strain or strang or something. So there is a, a volume, right? But it's still, it doesn't really follow this linear. And this is, this is a very odd, bizarre concept because the direction of the surface of the sphere can face 360 directions and this is very much like a compass where you have one to 360 one per degree right it can face anywhere but the structure of the surface has to be aligned to visualize the sphere is going this way and if i draw a face it makes more sense because now my brain can immediately instantly identify the direction it is facing and that is the interesting word it is facing a direction 
isn't isn't that cute right a face has a facing direction and I can identify this so anyway for the plane of the leg I will choose a different angle because it has to change right so the plane is folding to the side plane and folding back to the front if I go over I can fold to the side plane otherwise I can just go up and turn and turn and rotate and turn and turn and bring up and do things right so the idea is the plane follows yes it follows the contour and surface curvature it also obeys that there is a top and a bottom so there is a transition where if it crosses this barrier I see the top plane as opposed to seeing the bottom plane right this being the top this being the bottom in between has to be a barrier where this would change meaning if there is a box along this edge I don't see neither I don't see top plane or bottom plane if there is a box below yes I see the top if there is a box above yes I see the bottom this is the basic idea so the plane or the edge or the line of the plane it basically follows this and this is I like these planes but they are kind of difficult so I start at a certain angle at a certain location I go around the form I have to obey the form I have to check the curvature I then go back this one vanishes because anatomy and then it comes back someplace and goes it goes it goes it goes it goes across and then this is this is a weird part because it goes <clears throat> basically the structure dents in right it goes around round 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 and then there are certain dynamic things so instead of having a structure like a grid I go diagonal dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so and this basically it builds a new plane between and this is it makes the surface more dynamic as opposed to having a straight structure you have a partially dynamic structure and a straight structure and then a more dynamic structure and this again having flow makes it all weird but still you have basically this is, it's, it's weird right analyzing flow right it's like it's like this right and then you have this but I also have these and these and they begin they overlap they complement each other and this if I keep this in a square it builds a kind of flow map right usually this follows no purpose I would use this right it's basically a bunch of lines that have seemingly no meaning and purpose to then extract perspective information and this is basically if I can identify a plane as a box or box as a plane I draw the plane right to then again build something else but I have to build or create a connection and a context context towards 3d space and this is basically it right where I can more or less identify form boxes squares cubes and this is the beginning like I have even though this is a very dynamic curve if I keep the curve going and I have a grid between these points I have a square usually when we think when we think about the square we think box but in this case the square itself is a part of a dynamic whole right the, the, the whole the entire thing not the black hole the whole thing and it is a dynamic element that means the line becomes the curve along its own axis so when I have two lines I would have two curves and again I can have four curves for every plane anyway this is this is so weird um, angle variations planes hatching different things oh my goodness any questions are we insane yet I need more drink be right back Any questions?
Oh dear. And my ribs. Oh, they still, they still hurt. It's unbelievable. Basically, the skin, the skin below the skin, and people, maybe most people don't know this. Like, I, I fell across my vacuum cleaner onto my bed frame with the ribs, right? Like, below my, my man boob. It's basically in this, this position, this place. It's like ass sometimes. Like it's not really the breathing, it's just like the ribs, so there is a skin layer on top of the ribs that has to move around when you move your arm or when you breathe and stretch your stretch your back. And it's just it's weird sometimes. Anyway, any questions? Any questions? Self is plain madness. Holy poop, we are covering all the good stuff. And again, there is a there is a medium, and then there is a below. And instead of, again, having a linear cylinder, you have a more pronounced curve going through space and into space. The key point being that there is also a top. That means there is a cylinder that can be above you. But it also flows through the space, and there we go again with the uh, with the projections. This is this is a good example. So the flow, uh, the flow of the of the skin, right? Linear cylinder surface is basically I have one cylinder surface like this, and I have a secondary that goes like this, right? The one goes like this, linear, right? This this is a simple choice. I naturally would choose a more dynamic approach and I create a half line. This is the hybrid line because it ends at a triangle, right? It doesn't end at a square, but it has a triangle. So this one, for example, is not a hybrid line, right? Because it ends at a line basically between two points. Two points, right? Square, if it's just one point, it's a triangle. It's logic. It's not me. <laughs> so I'm implying that there is parts of the form basically wrapping itself around. And this is if you have a sphere, and I put a put a square on the sphere, you see it. And then I move the square, and it's not a square anymore. But it's still a square. But it's not really a square. It's, 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 Square. It's just like face. Square. But it is the same thing. Yet it is curved through space or on top of the volume. Basically, the skin of the sphere is curving the plane like a piece of paper. Simple. So, visualizing this is not always easy because it's basically contemplating the second layer of the skin surface. This is actually weird sometimes for my brain. But it's like it makes it look like you have a piece that folds around itself, but also back onto itself. That makes sense. No, it doesn't. Um, anyway, I choose a more dynamic approach for the visualization, at least in some areas, to show um, the curvature. And this is implied curvature, even though the form is cut. The curves imply a continuation. And again, I'm leading these two lines, this one and this one, they lead to a point so that I can come back at a different area to create the very, it's the, the hybrid plane, right? I'm not going for the square, but I want the triangle to show it is wrapping around. And there is a, this is so weird. So this cylinder has a, Basically, it's not the cylinder. But this plane, this, not this one, this, this plane, right? Between these two points and these two curves, has a top and a side and a front. And it has a, wait, it has two tops. It has a top and it has a front, and it's definitely curved, it's curved weird ways, and it can't even have a overlap. Holy poop. So only depending on the visualization of the, the hatching 
uh, angles, right? It comes apart or it falls apart. And this is very, very weird and awkward for the brain because it is either two-dimensional or three-dimensional. This is, this is it's like uh, the weird Dr. Moreau island of geometry, but not the weird animals. Um, yes, it still hurts. And it's, it's weird. Like it hurts, it hurts like a, like a bruise or like when you have really sore muscles, right? Like after doing sports or lifting too much, you feel that the muscles feel weird when you use them. This is what it feels like. Anyway, uh, need my drink. That's it. So, I do have structure, and structure is fine for the space between, right? This is where I have to contemplate the 3Dness of the space, not just the surface. The surface basically being the 2D skin on the 3D form. The 3D form needs a surface to be identified as 3D form, because I can't say that this is a round cylinder. It is a box. What the brain is lacking is information to identify the roundness of the surface, which is not contained in the square, but it is contained in the skin. Meaning all the information that is contained within the plane. All right? Can you elaborate? Elaborate on, um, yes, on what? <laughs> so I have to do a, again, the projection of direction. And this works. With the clock, I can have a 12, I can have a 6, I have a 9, I have an H, I have a T, I have a P, I have anything I want. But where does the form point? Yes, I should. I should. Like, still the funny part, you can't see anything on the outside. Like, you can't see anything, right? I can breathe, I can do anything, I can touch my ribs, so there's definitely not something broken. But the, the skin layer that moves, and it, it, like it, sometimes it hurts, sometimes it doesn't hurt. It's so weird. But yes, doctor. Anyway, planes, projections. So my default box is this. This is the lead, right? The lead angle. That means I have my 90 degree angle maintenance if I do this. If I have a different lead, I have a different, how do I call this wing, I think, because it swings around, right? If I rotate the one, if I, I'm basically paying attention to my lead and the wing is a consequence, right? It goes with it. So this is when I have maybe this one and I can have this still with the wing. Otherwise, if I go too much horizontal, I have a vertical wing and this is bad because it's flattening out the, the space and the perspective. So I choose a more three quarter view. This is the line that I would choose, right? By default. So, uh, that implies I have this one on the side and I can basically go along and wiggle the stuff. This is where the first break happens. Because where I'm, I'm on the front but I'm also on the side. Right? And there, there's the first plane twisting already. So there's one plane going and the second plane comes from the triangle. As does this, this, this one. So, I'm implying that there is a front, right? Front box, plane box. Then technically I would have a top plane going back, but it is, it kind of squished so it would vanish, but it kind of would come back if I want to do this, right? This is, it's like, it's there. <laughs> so I can basically decide to wrap the thing around the form so I can't see it. This is when things basically turn into the line, but it can come back. And I'm trying to measure basically this distance exists between these points, and it exists there, there, there. This is this is my angle that I would pick, and it already twists. And this is where I'm. I can be on the top, but I can also be on the side. And this is weird, but I am now definitely on the top, and this is the hybrid plane. So the rear top, this one, is 
is gone. But it is still there if it comes back. And as you can see, it, it turns into this triangle because there is a different plane that builds basically the side of the form that is missing so that it looks more three dimensional. Right? Right. <laughs> this is like it's the weirdest kind of science, right? I would do this, I would have multiple planes and basically have 10 copies. And all I do is I run around my weird angles and lines and do this and then identify what it does within 3D space and how does it affect the skin surface direction. So, what I could do is basically lead the surface into a completely different way. This is, I can lead it, lead it up, and I can also lead it down. And again, I'm looking for the triangles because the triangle itself contains a very important plane. Kind of swallow my, I don't even know my words. So the plane that we see is basically round, but it is also front. So if we had a round box that is round this way, but also round this way, and there it goes. There's your triangle. Right? Right. So, um, but basically, I have a plane in between, square plane. This is the beginning of the square plane, but it goes around, so I can't see it. And these are the two triangles at the side. Right? So what I have is basically the normal plane, plane, triangle, square plane, square. But it fuses into the side. So basically, um, oh, this is like, I, I know this stuff from my 3D modeling experience and basically manipulating form. Right? So something... It's basically, um, if I have a grid, and these are all squares, so what happens to the 3D thing if I basically collapse the structure like this? Right? And I did this, I did this with this line, because the entire, the entire thing, what, yeah, like I love this, these triangles, the triangles that, that you can't find, I actually, like in my brain, I like these because they are uh, hyperbole, I suppose, hyperbolic. So I have a normal flat plane that does what it does, and then I have a break, and it builds a different plane. It builds like a like a like a kind of edge, like a new edge, right? It goes down, and then it goes over, and then it goes down. So there is a difference in surface, right? And this is the difference. That I can find or basically locate when you have uh, a bit one a form, right? Visualization is required, right? It shows the curvature, right? This is the curvature visualized. The surface of the plane or the the thing is still flat. So considering that this th this uh, this thing could have a round surface skin. All of these lines would have to be curved. And this is this is the complete madness, right? If you go really step by step by step and you analyze the curves, it is good to know, right? Like the transition it builds when knowing this is what happens. You can understand that if there is a form that curves towards you, it goes back, it curves towards you, it comes back. And this is you, right? It all it does, it comes closer to you, it goes away, it comes to you, and it does so in a curved manner, right? Now we go back to something we all know. And I'm a, I'm a do it weird, right? But it curves, and it curves some more, and then it does this, and it goes back, and it curves some more, and then it goes weird, and goes back, and then that's this. Who knows what this is? Anybody, 100, 100 gummy points, what is this? What is this? Yes. Oh my god, it's def yes, it's definitely a lot. Right? It is the profile of a weird looking body.
the idea being you have form that curves towards the space and you have curve form and curvature that goes back right so the principle the simple idea is visualize the form as it does what it does within the limitations of your visual field as like through the space right and the forms of the space basically they break apart into geometric structures that you call a triangle wait what what what, what? usually um and i mean i i went through all these the, the madness right the utter madness of analyzing stupid triangles like it's it's pure madness pure madness the like the the weird conversion that has to happen for something to be recognized as three dimensional like at least when you draw it right something has to contain be contained in the drawing for this to work and I'm taking more plants and folding the plants and this again I can't stop it and say it is a closed form right like a like a sphere is closed because surface edges stuff and things but I can just la -di -da -di -da, go on and twist it and bend it and you go away so again the question is does it still contain enough stuff to be 3d and again it still it continues right wherever it, wherever it wants to go yeah it's it's sexy there's another line right it goes this way and then it goes this way and it does this it goes back and there's left and chin like this is fairly simple right Putting this then into a 3D kind of three quarter view where, like, there's so much form, right, that I, I'd like to draw. It is completely nuts and it is more related to this kind of stuff than any sort of structure because the face doesn't do this. Like, as if, right? As if the face does this. This is weird. I've not drawn faces in so long, but there are diagonal lines, right? These are all hybrids. There's so many hybrids because curvature is round and all this stuff. So I would have. A thing, point, shape, triangle, triangle, shape, more shapes, triangles, 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 so many triangles, holy shit, holy shit, triangles, 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 yeah, triangles. So still, in my brain, I love it, I love it, right, because I can easily identify this as a hybrid and it has to go around, right, and this technically should be the eye layer. But it is a bit weird, but it still goes around, right? And there's the eyelid, and it, it kind of should go around. So, I have a triangle that does this, which ultimately is a part of a round surface or a round form. So, the face is not a flat plane box, it doesn't do this. Right? But from the back of the skull to the jaw to the rest, it has a big roundness and it has the forehead and it has the, I don't know. So it's more like this, round. But it's not really like this because I have diagonals, meaning the internal structure of the face. When the face is straight, the internal structure is angled. Slanted. It's not dynamic. It's not aligned with basically the face. This uh, it's it's complete madness. But the internal structure, right? It's it has its own kind of thing. And so the triangle itself, I would split this and technically this maybe. So there's another triangle. But still, I have to keep in mind that <clears throat> between basically the tear duct of the face. 
and basically the air being in the middle, right? And if I contemplate, uh, let's let's use this one because it has a front. So front front of the face identifiable. Tear duct line going front, and then I have the ear. There's a line going front. So in between, I have my 90 degrees of curvature, basically 180 degrees because the sun goes around. So when I have a sphere between the middle center point that is closest to me, I have 180 degrees of curvature, and this is to be visualized, right? And these are my my planes. Hybrid planes, full planes, square planes, thingy planes, triangle planes, stuff. Right? So to visualize that this is like the weirdness. The weirdness. And I, I'm extending a plane from this eyebrow. And I'm going around. And I can't wait. This, this has to overlap. This, this Like, I have to figure out how to make this look round. And this is basically just like the sphere. The sphere has a most forward point. If I look at the profile of the sphere, which is the same drawing, this is the most forward point between this axis, right? This is the most curved, curved far point, however you want to call it, apex, right? When I have my face like this, profile view. I have a apex point. I have to have one. And that's just to, to help my brain identify the point that is the most forward. When I have basically the structure from this point to this point, it's completely different because I have cheeks, it goes fat, and then it goes skinny and it goes fat. Right? When I look at the face from <laughs> the front, it goes fat, it goes skinny. And between the skinny, I have the lips. And this is the wide jaw. And between this, I have the cheeks. And they can still be bubbly. They can be fat, they can be skinny, they can be full of food, or they can be very thin. Right? They, they have variations. And variations is basically no curvature, does it curve? If it's curved, it's fat, basically. Volume. It has a mass. Right? And it'd be, the simple idea is basically straight lines, flat, no mass, right? If this goes anywhere curved, there is something happening. Otherwise, I have the roundness basically where um, I have angle change happening, right? And this is, it's still round, and this, it's, how do I even, um, this, this is weird. Weird because So this cylinder, basically the circle, it has a front and it has a side. What you're looking at is a projection of a circle that is going around this way. It's basically this plane and this plane. This is what you see. Right? From the specific angle where you can't really identify the split point. It is still round, right? And you can project a circle on a corner surface like this. You will still see the circle from the one angle. The idea is, or the, basically the, the tricky part is how to visualize the surface and the curvature and the perspective change between the front plane and the side plane. Why the surface still maintains its roundness curvature. That's the mouth. So, I have parts of the surface that points to the front. It has to. So there has to be at least one plane that kind of facilitates this. And I have to have a plane to the side. Right? So for the face, I have to have both in place. Even though I'm looking at it completely from the side. And this is, it's, it's basically the same, the same thing <clears throat> when I have legs. And this, this works, this works very well because you can identify the volume of the leg along its structure. So this leg looks very volumetrically round. This leg, this leg, not so much. And then for me, 
when I have to analyze this, I ask myself, what is happening that creates this illusion? And technically, it's simple, but it's not so simple. But there has to be a structure, right? The forward normal structure. The structure has to uh, split apart so that you can have the volume change. And volume change <laughs> is so weird. So there can be no volume change within this square. So you need a new structure to facilitate and manage the volume change. And volume change is basically that the, the internal square is then above the anormal square, thus changing the volume. And it changes your perception. There are things that should be covered up, and my drawing is not very, it's not very good because this one may be going this way. So the other part is basically the placement, right? I want this to go up, but it can also go to the right or the left. And this is something that has to be shown. So if it does this, the angles change, right? You can see this, right? It goes from this one to this one, and these are very prominent and dominant. And this, this one in the back, right? It's still, it's confusing me because I'm walking along the edge as if this one just goes up. This is this is confusing, but still I can pretend that there are these squares just folding away from the box. But still, the idea is how to visualize the change in volume. And it's I have no idea how this would um, like logically putting this in words. I know there is a plane, and the plane basically splits open. Right, like this. And I'm visualizing in my brain the curve of this. Right? So then there is another plane. But the curve itself is where the split happens. Otherwise, you can't, you can't really have more volume if you don't change the structure. And this is basically the structure of this leg hangs on this curve. If this curve would be more dominant, right? It covers up everything behind it, right? It can even be go completely forward in a very awkward way, right? So what if the structure actually hangs on this instead of this, right? Like, so the structure itself has to change so it connects to the new points on the curve to follow and build its new structure. And this happens in 3 like. I have to keep in mind that geometry usually has three, three, three sides, right? It has to have a top, it has to have a side, it has to have a front. The, the, the square, the box, shows these. One, two, three. In between you have these are basically the contour lines. When you have a sphere, you can overdraw these and do the same thing. What this implies is your things are not flat. The lines imply this, but you can still do the curves. And the curves are basically like you have the outline of the sphere itself. And the outline of the sphere itself gives you curvature. If you know which curvature to take, this is easy, but usually um, for the linear sense, the cylinder itself or the ellipse contains all the necessary information. If I have a perspective square or a perspective box and I want to hatch it one way or the other, the square itself contains all the necessary information. Unless, right? Unless you have these weird things happening where form change happens. So the new structure has to flow in weird ways. There's a hyperplane. This one again, triangle. That tri tri triangle. This one weird because this one round, and it has a top, round, round, is so weird, I hate these plants, not really, they're weird. This goes up, and now I remove, and it looks weird, right? So, all I really look for, again, geometry, it has to have certain planes. So I start with a front, and just like the cylinder, Facing direction, front, this one. 
both of these planes front. This plane, this plane, side planes. This plane, side plane. Technically, this one, side plane. But I have this, and I know this, there is a variation. So this one goes all the way. Oh, no, it's good. It's good. All the way. And it has to change because this, this area, right, this point in space is below me. This is where I see this top. As I travel above, I'm changing through the visual field. So, this point is well above me. Well, well above me. So, that can mean that there is a top. And all I really do is there is a triangle that is part of a plane that is part of a box. So in between, again, we have the, the transition between point line form and this is like the plane goes into the triangle. The triangle ends at the edge of the surface. And the surface of the point of the curve, there is an apex, right? Like the most forward point. And then to visualize the curvature, and this is, this is the weird part because, oh, the madness, like the surface, the way I want to pull or push the surface into certain directions, like the profile of the front, and this is, it's all dynamic, right? I have, imagine a, a face surface from the front. This is all I need. I need two lines to visualize the first step, right? The side, the profile of the face has the same line, but something happens between this because there is 90 degrees of rotation happening. And this is when I, when I just contemplate one thing, right? I still, like my brain throws these weird variations just at my face for whatever reason, right? But there is a specific part of the surface that I want to lead into space specifically. This is, it's like a surface pole, or form pole, uh, something. So no words, terminology. Um, the torso is one example. This being the shoulders, and this is the transition for the, to the boobs for arm towards torso. This is the neck. So the surface of the sphere, uh, the torso, torso surface. This is from the front, section lines, Collarbone, and this arrow is basically this arrow. Like th this arrow is this arrow. Same arrows, right? Shoulder goes down, face in front, face profile. So the, my idea of the surface is that it's not linear, going straight down, like these arrows and grid lines would indicate. But it goes like this. It follows the diagonal towards the symmetry center line, right? That means that all the surface has to lead towards the outer edge, like this edge specifically. Like, and still it is to keep in mind, while I have to pull and push the surface on top of the volumetric form that is the torso, right? It's like moving, basically you moving your head around a huge ball that is in front of you. It's, it's weird. Don't, don't imagine this. <laughs> so your hand basically, as it moves across the surface, it's changing its orientation. So if this is a sphere, right, there is different points on the surface of the sphere, and they all have different orientations, right? This is, this is what I keep in mind. And it does this in 360 degrees. It goes around this way, this way, this way, this way, this, 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 and still it goes this way, this way. And in between, right? Like it goes anywhere at once. Ah, deep breaths, breath. Not those ones. I should shouldn't say this. Breathing, deep breathing. Yes, not the boobs. No be no breathing booba. I should just remind myself. So the the process for the pushing and pulling is. What I'm working on the most, I, I, pre I presume, I assume, um, especially for torso and for manipulating uh, the internal and not just the external, it's 
I don't I don't want to go there. It's, I don't want to go there. I'm not ready. <laughs> it's too dark. All the madness, all the clouds, it's so dark. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? It's like the demons, the demons crawling out of the abyss. Perspective abyss. Any questions? I have no idea how I get, got there, but how did I? I have no idea. What am I talking about? <laughs> so funny. Any questions? Have I ever thought about a place like that? What the place with the lack of from inside you? Which place? Additional legs, not the other ones. Um, too many variables. I may be understanding, but in your question, it's there are too many variables, at least in my brain. Like, what does the leg do? Does it does it face to the side? Is it like what does like you can look at the leg from the profile and the leg itself can rotate itself, like it can have a pose, it can angle, it can uh, squeeze its muscles, right? It can have a pose, it can stand up and still be profile view. But the inside, you mean the inside? Yes. It's very weird. Burps. Okay, okay, I can't, I can't uh, <laughs> check my uptime. Um, because how long have I been live? Com totally? Not live here. It's like four hours ago. Last last chance for the questions. And thank you guys for watching, for hanging out and stuff. Thanks, Leo, for the for the biddies. Uh, should I check my paper? I have no idea. Um, thank you guys for watching, lurking, going mad, and listening. Maybe your brains are not completely insane. <laughs> learned learned a little bit about the madness of space. Space perspective. I got links. There's links. Art book. Art book links. Stuff. I don't have this one. What is the time set? When? When is next time? I mean, I can check in five minutes. <laughs> that is. That is next time. Then I can check in ten minutes again. Then it's next next time. I'm stuck of viewers. My brain is gone. It's melting. It's melting into geometric shapes. Uh, did you have a question? No, you didn't. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, working, hanging out, asking me stuff, keeping me busy so I can talk and stuff, stuff and things. Um, I will be back. I will be back. Maybe not tomorrow. Because my brain is going to need some, some relaxation, some video game stress, <laughs> some, some more stress. I sent if she doesn't expect it. What? Oh, fine, fine, I, I don't. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I'm confused, I say goodbye. My brain, my brain can't take it anymore. So much confusion. See, I'm. And come back. It's like I'm drunk. Actually, it's like I'm drunk. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye.